Hey, welcome back to Pulse of Barbecue. I'm Jabin Pulso, and today at The Grill, we're making up some delicious pickle brine chicken wings that are absolutely delicious. And so let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Pulse of Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today at The Grill, we're gonna be making some delicious pickle brine chicken wings. And if you've never had pickled chicken wings before, this is one of those recipes that you just need to try out because they are so good. And you often have all the ingredients that you need in your house already because let's face it, we all have pickles and we all have leftover jars uh, full of that pickled brine. And so it's a great way to use up that pickle juice uh, as well as make some great tasting wings. And so what I have here is my chicken wings. These wings are still intact. If you prefer your wings to be split and separated into the drumettes and the flats, go for it. It's not gonna change the recipe uh, with this cook. And so I'm just gonna place these wings off to the front while we prepare our brine. And so I'm gonna start off with a few cloves of garlic. Just gonna take that and just crush those down. And then I'm gonna give them just a rough chop and we don't need to go overboard with this. We just want uh, some of that flavor of that garlic to be released into our brine. After our garlic, I'm gonna grab uh, some fresh dill. We're gonna chop up, uh, you know, a small handful of this. There we go. And the reason that we're adding some more garlic and some more dill is because we wanna just reinforce some of that flavor that's already in our pickle juice. And so today I'm gonna to be using uh, just the leftover juice of a jar of pickles that I had. And you can see it's about a half a quart. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our Ziploc bag. We're gonna pour that pickle brine into the Ziploc bag. There we go. Next I'm gonna grab all of my garlic and place that in there as well, followed by our freshly chopped dill. Just give that a little mix. And then to our bag, I'm gonna add in my chicken wings. Just like that. And then I'm gonna close this up we're gonna get all of the air out of this bag as we possibly can. There we go. And then with our bag fully secured shut, I'm just gonna go ahead and massage our chicken uh, in that brine solution. And we want that, that vinegar and that garlic and that dill just to really uh, start absorbing into this chicken. All right, there we go. And so with our chicken in our brine, I'm gonna place this now into the fridge for a couple hours uh, to allow that brine and that garlic and dill to really start absorbing into the chicken wings. And then at that point, uh, when it's time, we'll come back and we'll finish the preparation. So our wings have been marinating in that pickle brine for about two and a half hours and I've gone ahead and removed them from the bag and you'll notice that uh, you have a lot of that dill and garlic still on there and the wings are quite wet still. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, some paper towel and we're gonna dry off these wings because we want the outer surface uh, to be as dry as possible so that that skin uh, gets nice and crispy and bite through and just absolutely delicious. All right, so now that the outside surface of these wings has been dried off a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with uh, my Pulse Barbecue Chicken Rub. This stuff goes amazing on chicken wings. And I uh, do recommend when you are doing a pickle wing to keep those flavors a little bit more neutral or just to go light on your seasoning. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna add a little bit of color, a little bit of salt, but you don't wanna overdo it. Go. We'll flip those over and then I'm going to season uh, that top section as well. And again, we're putting just enough on to add a little bit of extra color without taking away from that pickle flavor. And so with these wings all seasoned up and ready to go, let me show you how I set up the Sloan Sear kettle for cooking around 350 degrees. So to set up our kettle today for cooking these wings, I filled up a full chimney basket of unlit briquettes and I got those coals mostly lit. Once they were mostly lit, I then dumped them into the Sloan Sear basket with my bottom vent fully open and my top vent about halfway open. Once that was done, I closed the lid and let those temperatures come up to around 350 degrees. 
So with our grill sitting around that 350 degree mark, let's go ahead and get these chicken wings onto the grill opposite the coals. You will notice that I'm not putting any hardwood into this cook today because we want that uh, pickle brine to really shine through and not be masked by any of that smoky flavor. And so with everything on the grill, I'm gonna close up this lid and I'm gonna begin cooking this, like I said, around 350 degrees for probably about 60 minutes. And I'm gonna come back about the 20 minute mark to give them a flip. So while we're waiting for those wings to finish cooking, let's go ahead and make a nice dip for these wings. And so I'm gonna start off by adding into a bowl one cup of mayonnaise. And then to that, I'm gonna add in another cup of sour cream. And then to this, I'm gonna add in a third of a cup of pickle juice. And this is just gonna help thin down that sauce as well as uh, bring some extra pickle flavor to our wings. Then to that, I'm gonna add in two cloves of minced garlic. I'm also gonna add in about a tablespoon of chopped dill. And then lastly, I'm gonna add in a little bit of spice. And so today I'm gonna to be using some habanero sauce from El Yucateco. I'm gonna add that in and go ahead and use your favorite hot sauce to this. And then we're just going to mix all this together. And it is missing a touch of salt, so I'm going to add in just a sprinkle into there. Mix that in. All right, we'll give this another taste. There it is, that's perfect. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the fridge to allow those flavors to really just blend together until our wings are done. It's now been 20 minutes since I first put these wings into the grill. And like I said, we're gonna open up the grill and give them a flip just to promote some even cooking. Ooh, those are cooking along very nicely. And you can see that that skin is starting to dry up, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and give these a flip. There we go. These are smelling very nice. And so I'm going to close up this grill again, and we're going to continue to cook it for another 20 minutes before we come back and give them a final flip. We're now 40 minutes into this cooking. So let's now open up the grill and give these wings one final flip. Oh, that aroma is so nice. All right, there we go. So let me just bring you into these wings. You can see uh, that that skin is starting to get a nice color and the outside surface is starting to crisp up a little bit. And so let's go ahead and just uh, take an internal temperature to see where these are at. All right, so these are sitting around 165 degrees. So technically these wings are done, but I find it's always best to push your temperatures with wings to around 185, 190 degrees. And so that's what we're gonna do with these guys. We're gonna let them cook for another 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and check our temperatures once again. We've now hit that 60 minute mark and our kettle grill has uh, been cooking around 350 degrees the entire time. And so let's now open up the grill and just confirm our temperatures. Oh man, these look incredible. That color is just so rich. Okay, let's probe this. We're sitting around 188 degrees and so these are perfect, exactly what we're looking for. And so I'm gonna pull them off the grill and then we'll get ready for the taste test. So in just 60 minutes, we've cooked off uh, these pickle brine wings as well as made that uh, delicious spicy dill sauce. And so let's go in for the taste test and see how we did. And one of the things I wanna show you first of all is just that skin, it's nice and crispy. So let's pull it apart, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna go for a taste of the drum and just see how we did. Mmm. -hmm. oh my goodness, mmm. <laughs> that is really good. Now that is a tasty wing, but let's go ahead and try the same one uh, dipped into our dill sauce. Oh, this is going to be so good. Hmm. Oh, wow. Now this 
puts it over the top. That is so good. You know, one of the things that I love about these pickle brined wings is that they don't take a lot of time and the flavor just pops with every single bite. You get that dill and that garlic as well as that little bit of vinegar taste uh, that is you know, classic with a dill pickle. You add in that sauce and like I said, it puts it over the top. It's so good. Uh, I hope you give this a try because this is one uh, wing recipe that you don't want to miss out on. So that's how you make those delicious pickle brine chicken wings for your next feast. Until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking. Hey, welcome back to Postal Barbecue. I'm Jabin Postal, and today at The Grill, we're making some smoking delicious pig shots, which is gonna be a huge hit at your next gathering, tailgate, or even the Super Bowl. Now than that, let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Postal Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today, we're making some delicious pig shots. If you've never heard of pig shots, pig shots are an incredible appetizer that's great for uh, you know, game day, tailgating, appetizers at your holiday feast. No matter what it is, these things are absolutely delicious and you need to check them out if you've never done them before. And so one of the things I love about this recipe is there's not a lot of ingredients and it doesn't take a lot of time to make these pig shots. And so to get started with this recipe, we're going to start with our sausage and today I'm using some kielbasa sausage and you can use whatever you prefer this is just my preference and, and so I'm going to start out by cutting these about a half of an inch thick we're going to make some nice clean cuts with these as well There we go. And so next I'm gonna grab my bacon. And so what I've got here is some thick cut bacon that I cut into uh, two halves. And so to make our shot glasses, I'm gonna take a, one of these strips of bacon and then wrap that around that sausage. I'm gonna grab one of my toothpicks and then I'm gonna place that through the bacon and the sausage and secure it just like that. And you'll see we've created these bacon and sausage shot glasses, which is gonna be the holder for our filling. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one more of these for you. So again, I'm gonna uh, take our bacon, I'm gonna wrap this around our sausage. I'll grab my toothpick. I'll place that through all the way. So with these pig shot cups all prepared, let's go ahead and move on to our filling. And for that, we're gonna start with one block of cream cheese. And we're gonna throw that into the bowl. Then I'm gonna add in about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of shredded cheese. Place that in there as well. And then I'm gonna add in one uh, diced jalapeno and you can add in as much or as little of this as you like. And then lastly, I'm gonna add in some barbecue seasoning. And so today I'm gonna to be using uh, my Pulse Barbecue Original Rub, which is gonna go really great uh, in these pig shots. And so let's go ahead and sprinkle in about, maybe about a tablespoon of rub. There we go. And we're just gonna mix this all together. All right, that's nice and thoroughly mixed together. So what we need to do now is get this mixture inside the pig shots. And so you can either use a spoon, a piping bag. Uh, I just prefer to use a Ziploc bag. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place all of this inside of this bag. And so once it's in your bag ready to be piped, just grab your pig shot and begin to squeeze it into the center. 
Look at that. That looks great. Okay, we'll just keep moving along. All right, there we go. And so these look great already, but we're not quite done. We're gonna add on a little bit more uh, of the original seasoning to the outside. We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on top. It's gonna add a little bit of extra color as well as uh, just reinforce some of those flavors that are already in these pig shots. And so with our pig shots all prepared, let's go ahead and get our kettle set up for cooking around 275 to 300 degrees. So to set up our grill today, I placed in about 12 briquettes into the corner of the Sloan's here. And then I grabbed my sous vide gun by Grill Blazer just to blast those coals until they're fully lit. Once my coals were fully lit, I then filled up the remainder of the Sloan's here. I then closed the lid and let our temperatures come up to around 275 degrees. All right, so with our slow and sear kettle sitting around 275 degrees, let's go ahead and get these pig shots onto the grill opposite the coals. With our pig shots on the grill, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add on a little bit of hickory wood, just add a little bit of smoky flavor. Close that back up. So with everything on the grill, I'm gonna close up this lid and we're gonna begin cooking this around 275 degrees and it's probably gonna take around 60 minutes and so we'll come back when it's close to being done. I'm about 60 minutes now into this cook and our pig shots should be getting close to being done. So let's open up the grill and take a look. Wow, just look at those. They have some nice color on them. And you can see as that bacon is cooking and tightening up a little bit, it's pushing out some of that cream cheese that's inside there, uh, giving a very unique look to it. Uh, these look really good. And so these are looking very nice for me. You can see that that bacon is uh, firming up and crisping up a little bit, uh, which is exactly how I like my uh, bacon to be. If you like yours a little bit more crispy, just keep it on a little bit longer. But at this point, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of my barbecue sauce and I'm gonna drizzle them on top of these pig shots just allowing that sauce just to ooze down the sides as it sets. There we go, that looks really nice. And so with our pig shot sauce, I'm gonna close up this lid again, and I'm gonna let this continue to cook for about seven to 10 minutes to allow that sauce to set up. And at that point, we'll come back, remove them from the grill, and we'll get ready for the taste test. after an hour and 10 minutes these pig shots are all done and they smell absolutely wonderful and I just love the look of these you know the way that cream cheese just oozes out and takes on some of that smoky flavor uh, this is gonna be so good and so I've been eyeballing this guy right here just look at this you can see this just looks absolutely perfect so let's go for the taste test and see how we did mm-hmm Man, this is so good. You know, one of the things that I absolutely love about this dish is how all those amazing flavors just come together so well. When you first bite into it, you're hit with that spicy and rich cream cheese filling, and then that smokiness from that bacon and sausage that's in there is just so good. You top it with that little bit of sweet barbecue sauce on top, and let me tell you, it is phenomenal. This is the perfect appetizer for your next gathering or tailgate, or just on the fly, uh, this is one recipe that you wanna check out for sure. So that's how you make those amazing pig shots using the kettle grill. I hope you check them out because I know that you're gonna love them. Until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking.